right, we're on to myth 17. And this one here, Josh, from your book, The 100 Myths of Entrepreneurship versus Chainsaw. Josh is Canada's top leading business consultant. And he wrote this book because you saw so many of these myths being executed by entrepreneurs. And that's why so many of them ended up in the 96 that failed, right? So this myth is saying about that meeting customers' expectations are good enough. Let's talk about, about more about that, Josh, and then I'm gonna go into some quotes from your book as well. Well, I mean, you can imagine you know, what happens is like the conventional is the service provider, whether yep. it's a product or a service, they deliver with kind of the minimal expectations, right? yep. the minimal requirements, yes. with the goal of keeping price low. Yep. And I'm trying to keep price low, so I'm gonna keep the scope low, yep. right? Um, you know, we just had a, I had a quote here, right? And yes. and and uh, the guy was talking about, well, I can cut a hole in there, or if you guys can move that, you know, if you guys can move this, it's just, we can move that furniture. Here it is, right? That yes. should have been the first option, right? Correct. Rather than you know, we have to set, we have to now coordinate a, spe a specific project to do it, right? That's right. Yeah. So you know, they do that with the goal of keeping price low, thinking that's in the customer's best interest. Right. Yeah. But what happens is you deliver a minimal product or a minimal spec service, yep. and then the business owner wonders why they leave you for a slightly cheaper option. Yeah. It's because there was nothing better about your product or service. Yeah, it just it barely worked. It just barely did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. So why wouldn't they trade it you know, for something that was slightly cheaper, that also just barely works, right? Yeah. He, they weren't overly impressed, you know, there was nothing special about what you mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. for them, right? Their experience was, yeah, even, even that guy, like, you know, yeah. he's asking us to have to move the counter when we're yeah. hoping that he would just say, oh, no worries, we'll take care of that. That's right. Right? It's just going to be part of the job. We'll do it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you got some quotes here, Josh, from the book. It says, uh, you know, seven out of 10 consumers say they've spent more money to do business with a company that delivers great service. They would spend more money. Right, just so that they could get good service, and that's by American Express. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a bit more about that, right? So, you know, when, what's been your experience with wanting to deal with, uh, you know, companies, vendors, and you have no problem spending the money? I know yeah. that I know that you, you know, you prefer to do that with good customer service, right? That's right. I mean, ultimately, like I place a very high emphasis on time, right? Yes. So if I think it's going to require less of my time, I'll, yes. I'll pay more, right? Yeah. Um, other people have, have different things. They, they, they buy, they'll pay more for status, yes. right? They'll pay more for fun, they'll pay more for something, right? Yep. Uh, but often, you know, price is not the highest consideration. Yeah. But business owners, if they only focus on a minimally spec product or a minimally spec service, price yes. is the only thing they have. And the problem is, the smaller you are, the harder it is to compete on price. So it's, it's, it's a losing proposition, right? right? You know, Michael Gerber suggested in his book that it, you know, business is less about what is done in a business That's and right. more about how it is done. Right? That's right. In fact, the quote here is the entrepreneurial model has less to do with what's done in the business and more to do with how it's done. The commodity isn't what's important. The way it's delivered by Michael Gerber. Yeah. So you think on the customer service end of it, you know, think about, we call it a one sheet, right? Yes. With all of your benefits listed out. What yep. do you do versus what your competitors do? Yep. And what, you have that on your website, right? You that's know, right. One sheet. Yep. So you're comparing it out where, and, and, and customers love cost certainty. Yes. They hate nickel and diamond. It's like, well, we can do that. That's a little bit better, but it'll be X number of dollars more. Or right. it might, the, even worse, it might, it might be more, right? Yep. But if you have this standardized level of service, right? Yep. And that service offering is better than your competitors, mm -hmm. customers will pay more for that, right? right? So we want to be very clear and very intentional what it is. And the idea of putting on a one sheet is you put, you know, what what differentiates your product or service versus your competitors on one sheet. So here's you, here's your competitors, yep. and you have more check marks than the bad guys, right? Right. Uh, that will allow you to charge a higher price. Now, a lot of times you'll have my, you know, six to ten benefits in there, and every customer probably has one or two hot buttons, right? Um, so they they probably don't care about eight things on that list, and they care a lot about those one or two things, and that's the reason why you're no longer a commodity. You know, you're doing something slightly different in a different area that's going to garner a higher, a higher price because yes. it provides a higher value, right? So in your Josh, I mean, you talk about, you know, what you try to teach the entrepreneurs. Let's, let's go into that, right? You say, I try to teach entrepreneurs to provide products and services with more included benefits than their competitors. I teach them to consist, concisely summarize these benefits versus their competitors on a one single sheet. Mm -hmm. That's what you talk about there. What else are the benefits of, uh, you know, providing this additional customer service and, you know, going above and beyond? 
So, I mean, they allow you to essentially charge higher prices. Yes. Right? Because the person who's buying it is more certain that it is going to work, that yes. it is going to solve their problem. Yep. So they would rather buy from you than something that's cheaper that might solve their problem. Right. Right. Or has a higher propensity to fail. Right? Yes. And so that and that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because now you garner higher prices. So now you can use better materials. Now you yeah. can hire better people. It becomes better. Right. right. You can market and you can actually get better clients as well too. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, it becomes a scale of business. Now that is the service end of it, yes. right? Which is different from the customer experience, experience end of it, right. right? And so it's not just about you know what it's done, it's about how it's done. It's yeah. like, okay, so you have this list of benefits of yes. your product or service that makes things better, yeah. okay? But how is it, you know, how is it delivered, right? right. It starts from the minute they call the yes. first time, the minute they email the first right. time, right? You know, the example is, you know, they pick up the phone and it's like, Bob here, yeah. you, know, you spent thousands of dollars, you got, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment, you got a million dollar shop in there and you answer it, Bob's here. Yeah. Like, that is a terrible way to start the relationship. It's like, right. hey, thanks for calling Bob's Auto Body. How can I make your day better today? Right? Yes. Something like that, right? Yep. What does the voicemail sound like, mm -hmm. right? Is that email that reaches out on the initial query, has it been well thought out, planned, getting all the details that we need, punctuation in the right spot, right? Yes. You know, especially for those initial onboarding interactions, like you don't have to come up with a new one every time. You can spend hours on it because you can use it every time and make it a laser show, right? Yes. Um, you know, when they come into the office, how are they greeted, right? That's right. We offer them coffee, right? Yeah. Is, is this it old coffee? Is it old stale coffee, <laughs> right? Did, or, did you cheap out to get the cheap coffee or did you actually get the premium coffee? That's right. What is it what does it look like? You yeah. know, what is the what does the office look like? Is it is it clean? You yeah, know, is, is it, it smelly, you know, like you got gasoline smell if you're at a an auto body shop or does it actually have some you know, uh, it, it's you know clean, fresh air fresheners and stuff in there. This is the part of the customer experience, right? right? That initial interaction is yeah. a big part of it, right? Does the staff greet them at the door, and do you have chairs that are you know got holes in them and dirty and stuff, or are they nice new sofas or nice chairs? Correct. And then it's time for the wow, wow factor, yes. right? And that's also part of the customer experience, and that's how you go beyond it, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the customer service end, if you've already portrayed these as your benefits, yep then those aren't necessarily going to be part of the wow factor because you've already told them, right? Yes. What are the things that they're not expecting, right? Yep. And so maybe you're a, a, a car service place, right? Yes. Were you the one that actually reached out to them before their next oil change that was done to try to get them to reschedule? Did you send them that text yeah. message, right? As a reminder, yeah. Yeah, you know, in, in, in our business, you know, uh, people come to us for CPA services, but we have a quarterly eight hour boot camp that they yes. get to attend. Um, you know, uh, virtually for free as a client, yes. right? How do we get them into that, right? As opposed to, you know, every other accountant, right? They're just gonna, hey, file your taxes, here it is. We're not even gonna have a year-end meeting. Yep. I'm just gonna email it out rather than, you know, give them FaceTime and actually walk through the statements that we give them to make sure that, you know, we're considering all the, all the things that happen throughout the year and making sure that the customer actually understands them, right? Yep. You know, I can deliver those set of financial statements, but how did I deliver that set of financial right. statements, right? Yeah. What can I do on the back end that no one else does, right? And the customer was not even expecting, right? That's right, yeah. These are the things that you have to think about. So it's customer service. These are the things on the one sheet that you predictably do yeah. better than your competitors, right? right? And sometimes the difference between better and different, yes. you don't have to worry too much about that. As yeah. long as it's different, if it's different, substantially so, someone else will figure that is better, right? That's right because yeah. no one else does that, right? Yeah. And then on the experience end of it, what are things outside of that, that's yeah. a premium level product or service that they weren't expecting? Correct, right? yeah. They didn't necessarily that, that uh, you, know, uh, you know, perfectly pleasant person on the phone all yes. the time, right? They didn't expect the reminders, right? Yeah. They didn't expect, you know, you're a car service place, it's like, oh, here you go, um, you know, Here's our text message on 10 tips to reduce your auto repair cost moving yes. forward, what you can do for prevention and maintenance, right? Yeah. You came in to get your brake pads changed three months ago, yeah. right? and now you get this. That's I wasn't right. expecting that. Yeah. You know, that, that's much more than what I was expecting, right? Yeah. That well, when your clients also come in, you give them a book as well too, right? So that helps to remind them of you. In fact, there's a, a story of a, a realtor that I know, you know, and he sells high, very high-end houses, yeah. and he gives a, a, this wooden box, this oak box, 
with a really high-end wine in it. You know, yeah. like wine that's probably valued around $150, maybe more. Yeah. And so his his customers always refer him new clients because that box they use to put keys in and every time they think about, you know, when a friend says, hey, you know, I'm trying yeah. to sell my house, who's your realtor? Oh, that guy's box is still in the house. It reminds them, you know, they didn't give some cheap wine that nobody wants to drink. He actually went the extra mile to give them the, you know, the wine that people went, wow, this tastes great. This is like a $150 bottle of wine. You know, just, you just help you, uh, you know, help me sell a house or help me buy a $10 yeah. million dollar house. So that's another way for giving a great customer experience. You know, the, the expect, experience that they feel that they want to come back and do business with you. Josh, what else can business owners do? Right, when every time we do these videos, you always give some action steps. What are some action steps right now that you know uh, business owners can do in their business to separate the customer service, improve that, as well as also the customer experience? So start with that one sheet. Yes. Rank what you can do predictably for your product or service yep. that's different and better than your competitors. Yep. Okay? So have that done. And then strategize on what things can be done in addition to that mm -hmm. that aren't part of the buying process, yes. right? Now, what can we do that they're not necessarily expecting that other people don't do, right? Yeah. Whether it's the way we feel that initial interaction or what we do after, you know, after the sale mm -hmm. that they weren't expecting, right? Make it scalable, mm -hmm. right? So don't make it that I can do this for one out of a hundred customers. What is something that I can do for 80 out of a hundred customers? Right. It's not gonna break the bank, right? But it's gonna be memorable, it's gonna be different, right? right? I mean, it can be as simple as a Christmas video, right? Mm -hmm. We do the Christmas video for staff. Sure. Everyone sends a car, but let's do them a personalized, you know, Christmas video, they get to meet the team, right? right. Um, you know, you, you can think about this, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, and generally you can do, you know, a pretty good customer experience things just with a little additional effort. There's that famous quote, people don't remember what you say or what you do, they just remember how you made them feel. Correct. Right? Yeah. So if you enjoyed this video and you felt great from learning from Josh or myself, do comment and let us know in the comments below or even write us your questions. If you ask a great question, we'll be happy to feature it probably in the next video. Go ahead and check out the other playlists of the other videos as well too so that you can get up to speed on things not to do in the business and what to do. And hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.